Hello everyone, welcome back. Let's do something a little different. So, me and the missus have been using what little free time I have lately to play Borderlands 3, and it had a really cool feature to where if you were climbing up a wall, or wanted to climb up a wall and you couldn't quite jump up it, you could mantle up, is what they called it. And I thought it was a really cool feature and pretty easy to implement. So, oops. Come on, there we go. So you make it to where you can climb up walls pretty easily. And we'll set it up to where if the collision doesn't clear, you can't climb up, which of course you wouldn't want. But it's pretty simple to jump through. So all it is is a line trace to check in front of you and then a sphere trace a little bit up front and above check the capsule shape. So let's jump over into a clean project and I'll show you how I did it. So I'm in a first person template project right here but this will work with pretty much anything uh, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go into the first person character and right here inside the event graph, oh, right here inside the event graph first thing, uh, actually first thing I'm gonna do just in case I'm going to go into the rifle, and just in case I accidentally do fire it off in the video, just bump that down. That's not important to the tutorial, that's just to save your ears in case I accidentally click and fire the gun. So we're going to do this off the jump functionality, so I'm going to grab that box, bring it over, oops, delete that, and move this to the side a little bit, because we want to check a couple things. So I want this to be a you press it in mid-air and hold it in order to fire off your traces and check so that you can climb when you want to, not when you don't. So we're going to add a branch right off the pressed. And we're going to see if the character is falling. So just type in is falling, it'll grab your character movement automatically and plug that in. Now if they are not falling, that means they are on the ground, we want them to jump. If they are falling, then we want to add a boolean over here called be held. And then we will set that to true right here because this will let us just hold the button down and it will fire through its traces. So off of stop jumping we want to set that held back to false so that when we let go it will stop our trace check. So if held then we want to do a branch right here because we want to see if they are holding the button and still falling. So you can either use this one or another one. I'm going to use another one just because I don't like cords crossing over too terribly much. Well actually you know what we can do? We can just go right out here and just add a reroute node. And that makes it pretty pretty pretty. Alright, so if they are holding the button and falling, then what we want to do is we want to create a function that will be called our mantle check. So now out here we can call that function on true. We'll add a short delay. You can make it as long as you want, as short as you want, however often you want it to check. I'm going to put it at point zero one. And I have completely spaced out for a second, so let me check how mine went. Ah, the hit detected. So we'll move the mantle check a little bit. We will do another branch right here because we need another boolean called be hit detected. This will fire off and become true once our check does its thing, returns back, cycles back through and it says, oh did you get a check over here? Oh then let's do something different. So if there's no hit detected, we want it to do our check. If there is, then we will do a custom event called mantle up. I'll drag that down here and mantle up will go right here. We don't want this one connected to anything because once it's got a hit detected, we want it to just basically be done with all this. But if we're mantling our check and it goes through and it is 
being held and is falling but has not hit one. Then we want it to cycle back through all of this. So I'll double click to add some reroute nodes. Move that up like that. And that's looking pretty good. So for our mental check, let us just inside that event do a line trace by channel. So for the trace channel visibility works, draw debug type, I'm going to set that for duration for now, and where I want it to fire off is from the first person camera. I will adjust this in just a bit, but for right now this will work. So world, we want to get the world location of the camera for the start. And then we want the forward vector because we want to get the world location and add to it an amount from the forward vector. So we want to go, we want to get a multiply node on the forward vector. Right click and we can convert this pin to a float. So we can go, let's say 150 units. This will go forward 150 units from the world location for that. So let's check real quick. So yeah, it's registering our hits, and it's... Alright. Now, on line trace hit by channel, we want to add a branch right after. We don't need any of the... Well, we might need to hit the... So I'm going to break that open. But what we really need is just hook this return value. This automatically detects if there was a hit. And if there was a hit, then we want to set the hit detected true. And then if the hit detected is true, we want to get the location of the hit. So what we want to happen is once we hit a portion on the wall, we want to move forward and up, and then run a sphere trace to check the collision above that to see if we can move there. So I am going to get the location, and I want to add to it. So I want to move forward. So since we're moving forward, we want to get the fifth <laughs> forward vector again. Words are hard. We'll multiply that again. So we're going to convert that pin to a float and this time I want to move, let's see, I want to make sure it's wide enough for our character's capsule collision. So we'll get our capsule component. Its radius is 55. So I am going to, oops, I'm going to move forward 55 divided by 2 so that we can get the halfway point. I'm going to move forward 27.5 units. And then we also want it to move up, so we will add to it an amount. I think the amount I used was 125. But you can customize this based on how high you want it to fire up and check. Basically how high you want to be able to reach up. Oh, and to do that, in case you don't know, just highlight everything you want to be lined up with each other and hit Q on the keyboard and then it does that. Alright, so from the location, let us get a sphere trace by channel. The reason we're doing a sphere trace is because we want to be able to simulate this capsule. This is how we'll check to make sure that if this will fit, our character will fit. So we'll do a sphere trace. The start will be right there, or wherever you have decided, whatever, you know, plus whatever. And then from the end, it'll be this plus 96. And the reason I'm doing 96 is because if you look at your castle collision, that's the half height. So 96, you want it to be able to go 96 units up. And that's how you know it'll be getting the right height for the radius 55 because again radius all right so we'll add another branch right here because if there is a hit this time then we want to set hit detected back to false so that when it comes back out of there it'll try again because if it 
hits any if this one hits anything that means there's something in the way a wall a ceiling something that you can't get past so right there we're going to yeah set it back to false so I'm going to add a return node right here now if it doesn't hit anything it means it's clear you can move up to that point we're just going to take this promote it to a variable called uh, vector, whatever you want to call it. You can teleport location, mantle up, point, whatever you like. I'm just going to set that right there. Now back in the event graph for the mantle up, let's add a timeline because we don't want them to just teleport up. I um, called it mantle in case that stupid thing was in the way and didn't let you see. It's just called mantle, doesn't matter what you call it. So I'm going to set held to false. Hit detected. Oop, back to false. Actually, I don't think I got to do held back to false. Just hit detected back to false. In fact, let me check just to make sure. Yeah, it was just hit detected and it works fine. Alright, so hit detected back to false so that next time you fire through this it will uh, register fresh. We're going to go play from start. And what we want to do is we want to update our actor's location based on the hit point that we found. So we're going to set actor location. We will update that. Now for the new location, we want to lerp the vector. Lerp is linear interpolate, so it goes from point A to point B based on a smooth ro smooth alpha that we can set up through this top timeline. Words are hard, man. My brain is frazzled. Anyway, in order to get this alpha, we can double click our timeline and open it up. We can set the length right here. I'm going to set it to about 0.25, and I'm going to add a float track. You can call it alpha, you can call it speed, you can call it whatever you like. Right click north towards the beginning of it and add a key. So the time is zero, value zero. So that's right at the beginning. And right towards the end, add a key. So you can customize the time, 0.25, whatever the length of your timeline is right there. And the value is one. So since it's a float, it goes from zero to one, just like progress bars in the health bar. It'll fill up according to that. I'm going to box select and then using this zoom to fit horizontal so I can see it a little better. Right click and then for key interpolation you can do whatever you like. I'm using auto so that kind of has this smooth in and smooth out. Compile that back into the event graph. Set our alpha to alpha. Now for the lerp vector we want to get actor location. And that is A. A is where you're moving from, B is where you're moving to. So we're moving to this vector that we found. So let's test it out. And just like that. And if it doesn't, oh, I can look up and got it pretty good. But now you can see if it hits something, or if I got a wall above it or a ceiling above it, and I'm like, I want to climb up here. Come on. Can't do it. Too high or too low. Whatever. Words and their meanings. <laughs> so yeah, there you, there you go. Now you can customize those shapes and numbers to get the exact need for you but this is the basic functionality you just do a line trace in front of where you're trying to climb measure the sphere collision to see if your character can fit and if so well, it kind of spawns it a little high doesn't it so if it's going a little too high what you can do you can just lower it just like this so instead of going 125 up I'll just go 100 units up It might still be a little high, but you get the point. Now, if you don't like it being attached directly to the camera, because then you got to look way up or way down, 
you can add a scene component to your camera and this can be your mantle from or whatever you want to call it just call it like that and then in your mantle check just instead of doing it from the camera swap it out for that mantle 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 there we go although when you first add it oh no okay sometimes that you would be going off to the left if you have it to where you try it and it's going off to the left you can rotate this inside your uh... Well, let's say I move it down right here now when you move this down you will need to move this up based on whatever you moved it down by just to make sure it's offset the same so see now it's firing off a little lower 60 might be a bit much Let's try. Maybe this is why I had it at 125. Yeah, it looks pretty good. But that way, in case I'm up here, I don't have to like look up or look down. That's just another way you can add a little bit to it. So I'll stop taking up your time. Just thought this would be cool or thought you might enjoy this. So we will be continuing the RPG series once I have a little bit more time. Uh, I'm still prototyping some of the more advanced functionality in that one and uh, school's kind of getting in the way of that but I wanted to give y'all something just to let y'all know I'm not gone I'm still here so I will see y'all soon bye